When glazing uh, salt and pepper shakers, you have to be really careful not to get glaze in the holes at all on the shakers. Uh, when you um, glaze, if you're using a brush, very carefully go around the holes with a tiny brush. Or if you're going to dip, I'm going to show you a trick where you can use um, toothpicks that have been lightly dipped in wax and inserted into the holes if you're going to dip. Um, if you ever get glaze in the holes though, I usually tell my students to turn the shaker over, run water through it, and really make sure that the hole is clean. If you just take a needle tool and try to clean the hole out, usually for my students that doesn't work. Usually there's enough residue within the shaker hole that it will seal up during the firing. And for my students, please remember that one of the requirements for your shaker set is that they must remain functional. The holes should never be sealed up. So to dip a shaker, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a toothpick and I'm just going to cut some toothpicks in half because uh, it's a little easier to deal with them when they're a little bit smaller. If you're dealing with the big long toothpicks sticking out of the hole, sometimes they're a little cumbersome and they get in the way. After I have my toothpicks cut, then I'm going to be dipping them in wax. And note that I have uh, either a paper towel or some sort of a tissue to set them on. I'm going to dip them in wax and I'm just going to set them on that surface to kind of dry. Um, I usually do not put the toothpick in the shaker while the wax is still wet because then it will kind of pool around the hole and you'll get too much wax on the pot. The, the idea is not to wax the actual hole itself. I'm just waxing the toothpick so when I go to remove the toothpick, um, it will work a little bit better and not leave so much glaze residue behind. Just for reference, the wax resist that I choose to use is the Axner wax resist. It is a water soluble wax resist um, that I uh, like a lot. Um, and here I have a whole bunch of toothpicks that have been dipped and now I'm just going to let them sit for a while, let them dry, and when they dry I'll come back and I'll insert them into my shakers. Okay, I've given it some time now so the wax on my toothpicks has dried and now I'm just going to insert these in the holes. And again, the reason that I allow the wax to dry first is if you put it on uh, or put it in the holes while the wax is still quite wet, um, you'll get a little overflow of wax, really, and uh, it'll interfere with your glazing. So I'm going to go ahead and do this on these. Oh, and just as a side note, I don't use square toothpicks for this. I only use round toothpicks. Okay, now that I have my toothpicks in my shakers, I do want to make um, one uh, point. I want to explain, be very careful when you're handling wax, uh, say the wax covered toothpicks. If you have wax residue on your finger and you touch the shaker someplace besides the bottom, you will get a spot of wax and it will resist your glaze. So my students, um, just be very, very careful. Make sure your hands are clean. Uh, wash them with soap after you handle anything with the wax. Um, so I'm going to go wash my hands and then I'll mix up my glaze and I'll show you how I'm going to dip it. And just to reiterate, the only reason that I would use the toothpicks is if I'm going to dip. If I, if I were just going to paint the shaker, I would just carefully paint around the holes with a small uh, paintbrush. Now, students, make sure that you are mixing up your glaze well. I can't tell you the number of times that someone will come to a glaze bucket and they'll ask someone else, hey, did you already mix this up? And then they won't mix it themselves. That's never a good idea because you need to be responsible to make sure it's actually well mixed because you want your results to be good. So 
I have waxed the bottom down here um, and up about an eighth of an inch. I can uh, put my finger in the hole of the shaker and I'm just going to submerge it, bring it back out again, and I'm going to wait until the glaze gets just a little bit uh, drier before I take those out. If I take it out right now, it could be runny enough that the glaze would run in there, which I don't want that to happen. And I actually have to hold it until it's dry enough that I can lift it off my finger, because I don't want to get fingerprints on there. And that's as easy as it is. We're going to take those out in just a minute. Okay. I've dipped my shakers, and the glaze is now dry enough that I can handle it. And I'm going to remove my toothpicks. If you wanted to save and wash your toothpicks, you could. I usually don't bother, just because I don't want to have to worry about the wax having come off. But the, uh, the wax does allow it to kind of slide out nicely without having much effect on the, uh, the glaze. And just check if you have any areas where maybe you have a, an accumula accumulation right around the, the hole. You just kind of knock off any burrs that you might have. And then of course I'm going to make sure that my bottom is sponged clean. Oh, if you're looking at this and you're thinking, why is that blue? This was marbled clay. Um, I have another video that you can look at for how I did the marble clay. It's, it's a fun technique where you stain the clay. But this is how you take your toothpicks out. So I'll finish doing these and then I'll get these fired and I'll show you what they look like. Every once in a while, despite my best efforts with glazing, I may get um, a hole which will get clogged up. In this case, I'm pretty sure it clogged up because this uh, shaker top is concave and I think glaze just ran in uh, down the sides. Um, it obviously is best to try to avoid that, but if that happens, you can use something like this. This is a, a great little grinder bit. This is from CI Products. Um, I have uh, several things uh, from CI Products. They are fabulous. You've seen many of them in other videos like the, the sticky bat and the sticky pad, and I have um, other various grinders that I'll show you. But um, this uh, particular little, little bit is great. I'm just going to use my, my Dremel type tool. It's actually a Ryobi brand, but I did want to show you a little trick um, for putting the stopper in. Um, you can just try to shove it in with your finger, but if you wanted to take, say, something like a pair of needle nose pliers, it helps you to encourage the stopper to go in. Oops. If you do that, just pull it out again. Um, there we go. And just get it seated right in there so it's up inside that bevel. And that's the results of firing uh, after my uh, dipping in the glaze using the toothpicks.